Welcome to SMT Tutors Media. Today, we're going to learn about gas turbine engine exhaust nozzle. All jet engines, whether they power aircraft or other vehicles, have exhaust systems with varying levels of complexity. These systems are crucial for guiding the exhaust gases from the engine's turbine to the atmosphere. Why is this so important? Well, it's the velocity and pressure of these exhaust gases that generate the thrust needed to propel an aircraft forward. However, it's essential to note that this principle doesn't hold true for turboprop engines, where most of the energy from exhaust gases is used to drive the propeller. Surprisingly, the design of the exhaust section, while seemingly simple, can have a significant impact on the overall engine performance. The exhaust section of a turbojet engine is composed of several critical components, each with its unique function. Yet, they all share a common objective, to direct the flow of exhaust gases rearwards in a way that prevents turbulence and, simultaneously, imparts a high exit velocity to the gases. This is especially important for turbojets, and to a somewhat lesser extent, for turbopropeller engines. The exhaust section is positioned right behind the turbine section and extends to the point where the gases are ejected into the atmosphere. Key components of the exhaust section include the exhaust cone, the tailpipe, and the exhaust or jet nozzle. Notably, there are two primary types of exhaust nozzles, convergent nozzles and convergent-divergent nozzles. In these exhaust nozzles, we encounter two main types, as mentioned earlier, convergent nozzles and convergent divergent nozzles. During the expansion of gas in a turbine, the energy contained in the gas is extracted and converted into mechanical energy, primarily in the form of shaft power. The amount of energy absorbed by the turbine is precisely what's needed to drive the compressor and other accessories such as the fuel pump, oil pump, and electric generator. In engines used for jet propulsion, a substantial portion of gas energy remains available to be converted into engine thrust. This is where the exhaust nozzle comes into play, converting the gas potential energy into kinetic energy, for example, gas velocity, which is crucial for generating thrust. Now, let's take a closer look at convergent-divergent nozzles. In these nozzles, the exhaust gases are accelerated up to the sonic point at the throat, which is the narrowest point. Beyond this throat, the gases are fully supersonic in the divergent section, right up until they exit the nozzle. This rapid expansion also creates a net thrust on the walls of the divergent section, further boosting the total thrust generated by the engine. Moving on, some gas turbine engines employ variable area exhaust nozzles. These nozzles have the remarkable ability to adjust the size of the exit area according to the engine's operating conditions. This flexibility enables the engine to operate more efficiently across a broader range of speeds and altitudes. Gas from the engine turbine enters the exhaust system at velocities ranging from 750 to 1,200 feet per second. However, such high velocities lead to significant friction losses. To counteract this, the speed of flow is decreased by diffusion. This is achieved by creating an increasing passage area between the exhaust cone and the outer wall. The cone also plays a crucial role in preventing the exhaust gases from flowing across the rear face of the turbine disc. Finally, the exhaust gases pass into the atmosphere through the propelling nozzle, which is a convergent duct, further increasing the gas velocity. The exhaust gases leave the turbine at speeds typically between 200 to 350 meters per second, which can result in significant friction losses along the jet pipe. To mitigate these losses, the exhaust cone serves two important functions. It gradually increases the cross-sectional area, slowing down the flow and preventing it from recirculating towards the center of the disc. The velocity at this point is usually kept constant at around Mach 0.5, just under 300 meters per second, due to the temperature of the gases and the speed of sound increasing with temperature. Additionally, losses are introduced by the slight swirl of the flow as it leaves the turbine, but the attachment of the cone to the casing is realized with aerofoil-shaped segments, which also help correct the direction of the flow. The exhaust cone assembly comprises an outer shell or duct, an inner cone, and a number of radial hollow struts or fins. The duct appears slightly divergent due to the inner cone profile, even though the outer duct may seem convergent. 
This divergence in the duct slows the gas flow, slightly reducing velocity and increasing pressure. The radial struts serve two crucial purposes, supporting the inner cone and straightening the airflow, which departs from the turbine with some inherent swirl. Now, let's move on to the tailpipe and the jet nozzle. The tailpipe's primary function is to channel the exhaust gases out of the airframe. However, its use comes at a cost in terms of engine efficiency due to heat and duct losses. In some engine designs, a tailpipe may not be necessary. The jet nozzle, much like the tailpipe when it's used. The exhaust cone, located right behind the turbine wheel, plays a critical role in collecting and expelling discharge gases at the correct velocity. It consists of a stainless steel outer shell and a central cone supported by streamlined struts or fins that straighten the airflow, decreasing velocity and increasing pressure. For certain engines, like modern fan or bypass engines, we encounter the concept of bypass exhaust systems. These engines have two gas streams venting to the atmosphere, high temperature gases discharged by the turbine and low temperature gases discharged from the fan section. These gases can be discharged separately or together. In low bypass engines, the cool and hot air streams are combined in a mixer unit before exiting the engine, which also aids in reducing exhaust noise. High bypass engines, on the other hand, usually discharge the two streams separately, with coaxial hot and cold nozzles. Sometimes, a common nozzle may be used to partially mix the hot and cold gases before ejection. Now, let's discuss the critical aspect of noise in jet engines. Noise is measured in effective perceived noise decibels, EPNDB, considering both pitch and sound pressure, and accounting for the duration of the aircraft's noise. The major sources of noise from an engine include the fan, compressor, the turbine, and the exhaust. Among these, exhaust noise is the one that can be reduced the most. It mainly results from the shearing action between the jet exhaust and the outside air, with eddies in the air causing high-frequency noise for small eddies and low-frequency noise for larger ones. To reduce noise, we can either accelerate the mixing rate of the two airflows or decrease the exhaust velocity relative to the surrounding air. This exhaust illustrates how corrugations can help mix the hot and cold streams by encouraging the hot stream to expand outwards while drawing the cold, bypass, air inwards. This improved mixing enhances efficiency and reduces engine noise. The noise generated by the compressor and fan is a result of the airflow around the blades. This noise comes from two sources. First, from the rotation of the blades in the airstream, and second, from the passage of air around the airfoils, even in cases of fairly laminar flows. Notably, the higher the turbulence or vortex formation, the greater the noise. In low bypass engines, exhaust noise decreases as the exhaust velocity drops, but the compressor noise becomes more noticeable. In high bypass turbofans, the noise from the exhaust and the turbine is somewhat reduced, but the compressor noise may become more prominent. From a noise perspective, a single stage fan without inlet guide vanes, IGVs, is significantly quieter than a multi-stage fan with IGVs. In some cases, it becomes necessary to increase an engine's thrust beyond its normal level. This can be required for taking off from shorter runways, on hot days, or for maneuvering in combat aircraft. Additional thrust can be provided by extremely high temperatures of the after-burning flame. Burners are arranged to concentrate the flame around the axis of the jet pipe. Thank you for joining us in this gas turbine engine exhaust nozzle lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Stay tuned for more engaging content.